Hi, and welcome back to another A-level biology video. This one is all about active transport. In our last couple of videos, we've looked at simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. These are all examples of passive transport, where a substance is moving from a high concentration to a lower concentration. But what happens when we want to move a substance against its concentration gradient? Well, this requires energy, and that's where active transport comes in. Active transport is the movement of the substance against its concentration gradient. This requires energy in the form of ATP, either directly or indirectly. And we'll look at the difference in a moment. It also requires carry proteins in the surface membrane. Some of these carrier proteins are known as pumps. When a particular molecule binds to them on one side, this causes the protein to change its shape, moving the molecule and releasing it on the other side of the membrane. Because we're moving the substance from an area of lower concentration to higher concentration, the protein needs energy from the hydrolysis of ATP in order to do this. Other proteins are co-transporter proteins. Co-transporters are a type of carrier protein. If we look at this diagram, we can see that there is a higher concentration of green molecules on one side of the membrane compared to the other side, and a lower concentration of blue molecules compared to the other side. If it was just the green molecules on their own, they would cross the membrane by facilitated diffusion. This would not require any energy. However, this is a co-transporter protein, so it can bind one green molecule and one blue molecule at the same time. It is the concentration gradient of the green molecule that allows the protein to change shape and release both molecules on the other side. It's not using energy from ATP. It's using the concentration gradient of the green molecules to drag the blue molecules through against their concentration gradient. The blue molecules are effectively hitching a ride with the green molecules. So we've looked at the active transport pump protein, which relies on ATP. And we've looked at the co-transporter protein, which relies on the concentration gradient of another substance to move a second substance against its concentration gradient. Now, these two types of protein often work together and a really good example of this is the absorption of glucose from the inside of the small intestine into the blood against its concentration gradient. At the start of the small intestine, there is a higher concentration of glucose than in the blood, so the glucose can diffuse out. However, towards the later part of the small intestine, called the ileum, the concentration of glucose is equal to the blood, so there will be no net movement of glucose. But glucose is such an important nutrient that we don't want to waste it. We want to absorb as much as possible. This means that energy is needed to transport the glucose against its concentration gradient. So that's the point. So how do we do it? Well, we do it with the help of sodium ions and a few different proteins. If we look at this diagram, at the top, we have the inside of the ileum with the last dregs of the digested nutrients passing through. The green cells are the epithelium or lining of the ileum 
They have folds called microvilli to increase their surface area. Finally, we have the bloodstream at the bottom. So, the glucose has to travel from the ileum, where it is at quite a low concentration, through the epithelial cell and into the blood, where it is at a higher concentration. First of all, glucose moves into the epithelial cell from the ileum by co-transport, along with sodium ions. Sodium moves down its concentration gradient and carries the glucose along with it. The concentration gradient of sodium ions is maintained by a sodium-potassium pump. This protein pumps sodium out of the cell and at the same time pumps potassium into the cell, all using energy from ATP. The result is that the sodium concentration inside the epithelial cell remains very low and so the co-transporter at the top can continue to work. Finally, now that we've moved all that glucose into the cell by co-transport, it can now travel down its concentration gradient into the blood through channel proteins that are found only on the lower side of the cell. So this part of the process is facilitated diffusion. This whole process ultimately allows glucose to travel from a higher concentration in the ileum to a lower concentration in the blood. So that's it for this video. Please like and subscribe and leave any questions below. There is a worksheet on the whole topic of transport across cell membranes available if you click the link in the description box. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.